And coming up in just a couple of minutes, did Matt Rule tell the world that Sam Darnold's days are numbered in Carolina? Well, it wouldn't be a shock if they were. But, Jenks, have you seen this NFL coaches picture? Apparently, they had some kind of meeting of the coaches, and they took a group picture of all the head coaches in the NFL. And yes. uh, it's hilariously awkward. <laughs> have you seen it? <laughs> yeah, and you can tell. If if you look at that picture and you say, all right, tell me who just won the Super Bowl. It's Sean McVay standing in front. He's got glasses on. It looks like his shirt's unbuttoned down to his navel collar spread wide he's feeling himself it's like yeah, that guy is relaxed because he just won the big one and my favorite though was matt rule matt rule looks like he's had a full absolute year. unit oh, oh my <laughs> god <laughs> they showed him before and after it's like listen you got a taste of the nfl and sam darnold as your quarterback and cam newton this is what it'll do to you that guy looks whew, it's been a long year for matt rule i love matt rule but the nfl has uh taken its toll I don't want to body shame anybody, but he looks like he has the body type of SpongeBob. Like he's super square. <laughs> he's like in some square. sports, it's a good thing. You know, if you're on the offensive line, if you're, you know, protecting the goal or something in mm -hmm. hockey, you want to be square. But he looks like an absolute unit in this picture. And maybe it's just a bad picture. I don't want to go in on him too hard. But I think the funniest thing to me is the wide array of of, I don't want to say personalities, but different looks that we see from these head coaches because you go all the way from Mike Vrabel, who looks like he could be a bouncer at a nightclub, to the new head coach of the Dolphins, who looks like he could be working at Best Buy <laughs> in the tech department, to um, Lovey Smith, who I totally forgot was a head coach in the NFL. My favorite is always Andy Reid. Andy Reid always wears his Hawaiian shirt, and he looks like he's ready to eat a cheeseburger at any time. He never takes these things too seriously. Yeah, this picture is amazing to look at. And Ron Rivera from the Commanders actually wore a Hawaiian shirt yesterday. But I just, I love seeing Sean McVay in front like he's about to go to a party. How many of these head coaches can you name? Because I went like down the row and I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> like, like, I know the main ones, obviously. But certain ones, like when they're not in their coaching garb and they don't have on their team colors, mm -hmm. like there's a few I'm like, I'm not too sure who that is. Like, you know, the main ones like oh, for sure. uh, John Harbaugh is pretty recognizable. I know Mike Vrabel. I don't know. I guess I would have to point him out. But a very funny photo. And I am so glad that this is a tradition that we continue to do in the NFL just because of the awkwardness. This is the Daily Tip presented by BetMGM. I'm Chelsea Messenger. He's Michael Jenkins on this fine Wednesday morning. The BetQL Network stream live nationwide on the free Odyssey app and on BetQL.com. But let's dive into the NFL and look at the headlines that we have to work with today. Shay, what's it looking like? Fact or fiction? We start in Green Bay. Packers coach Matt LaFleur knows they need to do something to fill the holes left by Devontae Adams and Marcus Valdez-Scantling. Said, quote, we definitely need to get some speed in that room. We need a legit guy that can take the top off the coverage. So, Chelsea, fact or fiction, you expect regression out of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers offense this season? I think so. I'll go fact here just because Aaron Rodgers was so good last year. He was so good that even the people that hated him had to vote for him for MVP with the exception of one guy that uh, would not change his mind. But you look at those type of numbers that Aaron Rodgers put up last season, and those two receivers, those were his main guys. Devontae Adams was an anytime touchdown machine, and Marquez Val Valdez-Scantling was the speed guy, the guy that could get down the field, and the guy that was hauling in those downfield passes. So those are two big holes that they're going to have to fill, and I'm not sure if they will. Devontae Adams is... Uh, somebody that I don't think you replace with somebody you draft in the NFL draft or somebody you just pick up off the street. So I think there will be some re uh, regression for the Packers offense just because, number one, it was so good last year. And number two, those are two big pieces of this Packers offense. I agree. This is a fact. He had a Aaron Rodgers had a fantastic year last year. That's why he won MVP. So he's due for a little bit of regression anyway. He's a year older. I don't think that will affect him too much. But who is he going to throw to? The Packers are in a really interesting spot. And I've heard that maybe they, they make a trade for DK Metcalf. They need someone to come in here who is an 
A-list receiver, a top-tier receiver, and I don't know who they're going to get, Chelsea. And the idea is, okay, well, they have the 22 and 28 picks in the draft, so they'll draft a guy. Well, it takes a long time particularly when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, to develop a chemistry with his receivers. Remember, it was, what, two or three years before Devontae Adams really developed a chemistry with Aaron Rodgers? He doesn't really play nice with young guys, and it's hard to come in as a rookie and be the successful receiver that you need to be when you play with a guy like an Aaron Rodgers, a quarterback of that caliber. I think the Packers are in trouble here, and, yeah, I expect regression. I'm going to take the other side and say fiction. I uh, think that when you look at where they're picking in this draft, number 22 and number 28, there's a chance they take two wide receivers. Uh, Chris Olave is expected to be available at number 22 out of Ohio State. He's a known speedster, so that's huge. I think we've seen the league change a little bit since when Devontae Adams entered and rookie wide receivers weren't so immediately ingratiated into offenses. Now we've seen the likes of Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and others get like immediate opportunities to be impactful. I think Chris Olave is that type of guy. And I think Aaron Rodgers knows, frankly, time is running out. You don't have three years to build chemistry anymore. So you kind of got to get it moving as soon as possible. Uh, I do think that this is a spot where we've seen some change as far as rookie, rookie wide receivers go, and they've been high impact immediately lately. So I like Chris Olave to do that with Green Bay. Panthers head coach Matt Rule has seen the pro day workouts of Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, and Matt Corral. And he says they're all impressive. I think one of those quarterbacks will be a top 10 pick. Well, just so happens that the Panthers have the number six overall pick. So fact or fiction, Carolina needs to draft Sam Darnold's replacement, Jenks. Yes, this is a fact. Now, obviously, you want to be in a position to get the quarterback that you want. But since they have that top 10 pick, that number six overall pick, they should be. I would be a touch worried that this isn't the strongest draft class as far as quarterbacks go, certainly not even close to where it was last year. But at number six, you can probably have your guy. We're going to see defensive players probably go one and two in this draft. And why would you bring in another quarterback and trade away any draft capital that you have when you're already a weak unit? So if they like a quarterback in the draft, and certainly based on rule being very attentive at pro day, they certainly seem like that they have someone in mind, then yeah, I think you have to do this. It's time. You have the pick to do it, so go for it. Fact. I'm going to go fact, too. I think this is a matter of taking a chance and rolling the dice and hoping that one of these guys in the draft actually pan out to be better than the other available quarterbacks because who do the Saints just sign? Andy Dalton? Like That's a testament to what the quarterback market is right now. So you can go with somebody who – you know, it is steady and mediocre, but you know it's not the future of your franchise. And that's the thing. The Panthers need to start building for the future because these are not years where they're winning the Super Bowl. I think we all know that. So it's time to commit to the rebuild, start to take chances on some of these younger players. And yeah, I think the fact that they're the number six picked uh, pick as opposed to other years in the draft, maybe they get one of these guys and maybe they strike gold on one of these players who have not gotten a ton of hype entering this NFL draft. Everybody keeps saying that these quarterbacks are better than we think that this draft actually is going to be good as far as the quarterback position goes, but this happens every quarterback draft. Every time we get to this point of the year, this part of the calendar, we start hearing the steam pickup for all of these guys. And every year, like Blaine Gabbard ends up being Blaine Gabbard, no matter how much steam he gets in mock drafts or from whatever draft projectionist. So I'm really not buying it. I think that Carolina should probably stave it off a year and wait for a better quarterback class. Look, I could be totally wrong. I'm just giving my opinion on this moment. I don't buy that any of these three quarterbacks or really any of the quarterbacks in this draft are the future for any of these teams. Saints have signed Andy Dalton to back up Jameis Winston, but more importantly, Coach Dennis Allen says that Taysom Hill will focus on being a tight end. So fact or fiction, Chelsea, Allen and the rest of America know something that Sean Payton could never figure out. <laughs> Oh, I never want to say that I'm smarter than Sean Payton because he's a quarterback whisperer for a reason, but his infatuation with Taysom Hill was a little mind-boggling, and I thought it was kind of hilarious that he got the Saints to sign him to a long-term deal and then retired. So, you know, <laughs> like I laugh about that. Um, but Taysom Hill, like I think we saw what was going on there with him, a really athletic guy that I think works in package situations, 
but not the guy when it comes to being the actual starter. So Sean Payton, I think, is good at working in those wrinkles and maybe different looks when it comes to quarterbacks switching out. But I think it's been written. History's been written for Taysom Hill. I don't think he is a starter. So uh, maybe it is a fact. Maybe I'm just spitballing here, but when Shay writes that the rest of America knows something that Sean Payton could never figure out, I feel like I know how he feels about this. I feel the exact same way. I never understood Taysom Hill as a quarterback, ever. Not even as a change of pace guy. Even when Drew Brees was in the lineup, and I understand that Hill had a stronger arm than Brees did at the end of his career, but it just disrupted the flow and momentum of the offense. And when Taysom Hill has had his shot, he's been mediocre at the very best. I'm telling you, Sean Payton gave him an absolute, just a, a sweetheart deal on the way out. But Taysom Hill is not a quarterback. He should be playing a different position, which is receiver. So this is a fact. Yeah, I view Taysom Hill as like an interesting offensive weapon. No good quarterback. Not in the NFL. Like it's just, it's not really an insult. There's very few good quarterbacks in the NFL. Taysom Hill is not one of them. But you're paying him. He's going to be one of the most expensive players on this roster. So you might as well figure out a spot where he can be productive. If tight end is that position, then I think you're in business. But I also think that there's some versatility here where maybe he gets snaps at running back. Maybe he gets snaps at tight end. Maybe you put him in the slot or even out wide occasionally. Like he's an he's an interesting weapon. And I think there's the ability to experiment a little bit. I just think, yeah, uh, Dennis Allen is right to know that you don't experiment with him at quarterback anymore. Well, the 49ers, speaking of quarterbacks, refuse to name who the QB one is on their depth chart. But Kyle Shanahan says he expects to see Trey Lance starting sooner rather than later. So Chelsea Factor Fiction, Kyle Shanahan is just having fun at our expense. I think this is definitely a fact, even though he could be telling the truth. This is the same guy that said, well, I don't know who's playing a quarterback because we might not even be around <laughs> on this earth next week. So Kyle Shanahan is a known troll of the media and the public when it comes to his press conferences. So take that into effect when you are deciding your answer for this. But I don't know. Uh, they've already expressed that they like Trey Lance. Like, clearly they do. Uh, so a guy that has enormous upside. The sabotage factor with Trey Lance starting is that Jimmy Gar Garoppolo could do the same thing that he did last year and take this team deep in the playoffs and it seems like every single game we're thinking, oh, is this the game that Trey Lance starts? But Jimmy Garoppolo just hangs on by a thread. So I think we see more of that. Jimmy Garoppolo, despite not wanting to be in San Francisco, I think he's going to be just good enough to stave off Trey Lance. I think this is a fact as well. I never trust Kyle Shanahan. He's constantly just throwing out the same ridiculous ideas that he can't talk because of what might happen a day later or a week later, like you mentioned. And didn't he got to go through this last year with us right. where he would never just completely 100% back Jimmy Garoppolo. They've been stringing him along, stringing him along for more than a full year now. So this is just the same tired thing that Kyle Shanahan always does, which is just sort of trot out the idea that maybe Trey Lance will be the guy this year. So I think this is a fact as well. We've heard this line in different ways over and over and over again over the past 365 days. I think this is fiction. I don't think they drafted Trey Lance to sit for longer than one year. And I think that's just the way that we see this league now. Like Pat Mahomes was not drafted to sit for more than one year. And I'm not saying that Trey Lance is the same as Mahomes, but it is like they didn't draft Trey Lance to not be the guy. They drafted him to be the future of their franchise. Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't want to be there anymore. I don't think San Francisco wants Jimmy Garoppolo to be there anymore. It's kind of a mutual feeling, at least from us as public observers, what we're able to see going on in that franchise doesn't seem like there's much mutual interest in Garoppolo on either side, whereas Trey Lance was drafted to be the guy. So I do think like Kyle Shanahan, known for trolling us, is telling the truth here. He expects Trey Lance to be the starter probably this season. I think it really just depends on how Jimmy G does. And I think you're right. Like there's a reason that they have all of their eggs and their future invested in Trey Lance. But the problem is this isn't a rebuilding team. This yeah. is a team that very much has – a chance to go deep in the playoffs once again. I, I would argue, this is to argue back on that. I would just say the Chiefs weren't a rebuilding team when they switched off Alex Smith to go to Mahomes either. And Mahomes at the time was an unknown quantity.
That's yeah, true, but, but I think Mahomes is a little different. Yeah, I think now hindsight of that thing into it because what if Trey Lance is that good? Like he was drafted in the first round to be that good. He was, right, but, but, but if you're saying that you're expecting him to be anywhere on Patrick Mahomes' level. No, that's, I'm not. That's, I'm saying that's what you would hope. Like, that's the ceiling. Right. I'm not saying I think he can do that. I'm just saying that's the reason why they would start him. I think it is a similar situation to what we saw in Kansas City because Alex Smith kind of had a lot of the same labels that we are seeing from Jimmy Garoppolo. Game manager has done well for the Chiefs because you, if you remember, Alex Smith was not terrible. He was pretty good with the Chiefs. So I think there definitely are some parallels there, but I don't know. Patrick Mahomes is certainly a once in a lifetime guy. Uh, how much time do we have? Is the music playing? Not I think much. We got to get to break. Yeah, I hear the music. So, all right, we've got to get to break. A major battle for the top of the NBA's Eastern Conference tonight. That's next on the Daily Tip from BetQL, presented by BetMGM.